Greetings, everybody. Welcome to G4G on YouTube. I'm your host, Napalm Dawn. Today's soundtrack is brought to you by the Chrono Cross OST. If you're a fan of my older videos, you'll know that aside from the Final Fantasy series being one of my favorite series of all time and it having great music, Chrono Cross is by far one of my favorite games of all time. And I know a lot of people get into arguments over that saying how much better Chrono Trigger is and Chrono Cross wasn't a real sequel and blah diddy blah blah fucking blah uh yeah timey wimey bullshit is always one of my favorite things in games and it's probably because I think Chrono Cross just nailed it so on to today's video and we are doing part three in a series that I've been running and uh, before I get into the meat of the video, since I think this one will be a little shorter, I want to establish a few things over here. This is a comparison video or series of videos between several of the Marvel mobile games that we had, whether they were Facebook like Marvel Avengers Alliance or their Android and iOS like Marvel Strike Force, Future Fight. That is the topic for these videos. These are not Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux videos. So if you want to talk about the new game, if you have questions about it and everything like that, please do not talk about them in these videos. That is essentially like running into your friend who works at McDonald's at a grocery store somewhere and asking him to start flipping burgers for you. That's not the topic that we're on over here. This is a comparison set of videos. Don't talk about Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux here because it's off topic. That being said, Goofy has given us a timeline of when some updates will be available and everything. And you can look to them towards the beginning to early middle of February. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Just rest assured when updates come, you will get a video from me. So just... Hold your horses and wait, and we'll talk about it. So today we're looking at the bruisers for part three. We've already done tacticians and blasters. We're now going to use the bruiser set for Marvel Avengers Alliance as the basis for this video. We're going to start with anti-venom, and in order for me to properly do anti-venom justice in this video, I do have to talk about venom because that's how he's represented in many of the other games with him being Venom and Anti-Venom being like an alternative uniform and everything like that. So whereas Venom himself in Marvel Avengers Alliance was pretty trashy and could have been fixed with one single ISO and that is if you had one ISO, they played them just had to make one ISO that gave you control of him when he was out of control. That's it. Like, that would have probably fulfilled every fanboy's wet dream when it came to Venom. Sadly, we never got it, and it was just weird. But anyway, Anti-Venom was much different. Anti-Venom was a glorious work of nature in Marvel Avengers Alliance. <clears throat> he was one of the first characters, along with Gamora, to do Doom. And uh, with the Scroll of Runamaroth and Pesty, he was fucking vicious. You can't say anything other than that when it comes to anti-venom he was nuts and before he was slightly nerfed he had a great d power and uh i am the one really did great opportunistic debuffs it removed buffs crusade was one of the highest hitting abilities in the game because of its exploitations and cleansing touch set up a really good thing with doom if I, I take it back. He didn't put Doom on people. But if somebody put Doom on people or genetic alteration, Purge could remove it before it fell off naturally. If you remember correctly, those two debuffs said they take a big pop if they fall off unnaturally. So all he needed to do was have Gamora put Doom on somebody, have Anti-Venom purge them, Doom would proc and hit him with a big hit, and there was nothing they could do about it. So... It was a particularly vicious combo. He appears in Marvel Future Fight as Venom with an anti-Venom suit. And he also appears in Marvel Strike Force as Venom. And he was in Marvel Heroes as Venom with an anti-Venom suit, I believe. And there may have been an anti-Venom team-up. 
I have to say across all of the games that Venom slash Anti-Venom is in, clearly Anti-Venom and Marvel Avengers Alliance wins. He was just nasty. He teamed up with the spiders well, but he really teamed up with Pesty, and if you encountered a Anti-Venom and Pesty defense, you probably knew you were in for a lot of shit. That being said, he is pretty good in Marvel Future Fight as a combat hero. When he's Zombie Venom, he's a villain, but when he is any of the other suits, he's actually a hero, and he's not bad. He does, he does hold his own, especially if teamed up with other symbiotes. Sadly, for all the fun that Ares was in Marvel Avengers Alliance, he's appeared in no other games other than being a DC hero or DC villain in the DC Comics Legends game. The one that's a little bit like Marvel Strike Force and Marvel Avengers Alliance. He's a character there. We're not going to compare him. It's the DC Universe. Uh, he was also in the Wonder Woman movie. Um, sadly, him and Hercules have just not appeared in other games, so we really can't talk about them. Beta Ray Bill, also known as Thor's Horse Thor or Thor Horse, was pretty strong when he came out in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Sadly, he doesn't appear in other games, but he did appear as an alternate uniform to Thor in Marvel Heroes, despite him being quite a different entity. Thors was a fun character to team up in the days of the electrical meta, like Carolina Dean, Destroyer, and Victor the Infiltrator. He was also part of the game crashing bug that existed for a little while, where you ran Electro, Beta Ray Bill, and the agent ran one of the Electro Hammer types, and you would crash the game for anybody fighting your defensive team, thereby resulting in a default win. Bishop, sadly, doesn't appear in any other games other than Marvel Avengers Alliance, but he is in Marvel Contest of Champions. He could have been more interesting in Marvel Avengers Alliance, and some of his ISOs made him better. Uh, the, the absorbing powers, having like a good guy kind of Sebastian Shaw was really good. Of course, he got his shit pushed in in the Days of Future Past movie, but we don't have any comparisons for these three bruisers in a row because now we're on Captain Britain. Captain Britain was a monster of PvP when he first got released. His ability to put out debuffs and then slam them with smashing, having them hit everybody was good. And then the real payoff was Britannic which was the Paragon Exploiter, and he put those out with Weak and Dizzy Exposed, Slowed. Britannic was a nightmare in some of the early days of PvP. They had to nerf him because he was so strong. He tends to be a favorite in a lot of people's brains when it comes to Marvel Avengers Alliance's history, and I think a lot of us would like to see him return to form when Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux gets going, but unfortunately we don't have a comparison for him. Colossus, he suffers from what I like to call bruiser virus. Bruiser virus often means that tanks, or tank virus, tank vanilla, it often isn't, it's not a glorious position to just be the guy who takes everything and takes it, takes it, takes it, but doesn't really dish it out. I should know, I've been maining a guardian druid, <coughs> in World of Warcraft since Vanilla. It was not my first tune in Vanilla. It was my third or fourth, and it actually was a bit of a challenge when people used to say druids are only good for healing. You can't tank well on a druid. I was like, oh, well, fuck you. I will do that. And that's why I've been a tank ever since. Tanks and MMOs have their spot because everybody wants one because they sit and soak up all the damage and everybody else gets to pew pew. In games like Marvel Avengers Alliance, tanks often are boring because they don't dish out a lot of damage. They just stand there like the wall bosses from the Final Fantasy series. Well, Colossus was always kind of basic. Hardly anybody really used his modern outfit. I do believe Pot Kettle Black, back in the old days, liked to throw some love on modern Colossus. Mostly because he started off with Steel Fortress like Captain America did. 
but it was his Phoenix 5 outfit that made a rebirth thanks to Emma having a rebirth when the pre-firing Infiltrator ISO came out. The Phoenix 5 uh, linkage between the two, especially with him being a bruiser and his Phoenix 5 buff of the restoring health and stamina and the damage reduction actually brought Colossus back to a ridiculous power level in that game. Yes, it was because he was riding Emma's coattails, but it was an honest-to-God synergy between the two. You can't fault Colossus for that. He was strong by himself, and it was only magnified by being in the presence of Emma's Phoenix Force. He is in Marvel Future Fight somewhat recently, but he's not been in any other game other than Marvel Heroes where he had a ton of outfits. He's in Marvel Contest of Champions, including Colossus with the Juggernaut helmet. I really do have to say his power spike was Marvel Avengers Alliance. Nobody really talks about him in Marvel Strike Force. He's tough to damage, but again, he suffers the bruiser virus. He just doesn't do anything. Gorgon, despite his really, really cool headbandy thing going on over here, um, and the damage that he could put out, he was also one of those people that followed up single target attacks with AoE. So if somebody was flanked and you hit him with feel, with feel the Thunder, he followed up with Dance of Death, which is all enemies. Good and bad. Um, AoE follow-ups are always a little risky, but when it works for you, it works. He was fun, but he's not in any other game really, so we can't get to talk about him. Groot. Groot was in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Of course, he got released in his bellhop uniform first. And then came his movie uniform. He was a very strong tank for some time. Mostly because he was so hard to damage. And then of course the resurrection. And then when he was um, with Guardians. The damage reduction for himself and everybody else. He was a tough tank to deal with. He was often paired with Gamora. Whereas a lot of the other games he often gets paired with Rocket. Um... He is a Marvel Strike Force, and he is a Marvel Future Fight, and he was a team-up in Marvel Future Fight. He's actually a team-up that I use quite often. The fact that he was in three modern Marvel games... Oh, he's also in Marvel Contest of Champions, including a, skin, a different version of him with King Groot. All the games that he's in since Marvel Avengers Alliance, I really do have to say he was at his best in Marvel Avengers Alliance. He's considered pretty trashed here in Marvel Strike Force. He bumps up Rocket a little bit, but he just doesn't do enough to write home about, and what he does do, he can be purged. In Marvel Future Fight, he's not the best standalone, but he is one of the best people to throw on your team, especially if you're having a tough time with an ultimate boss, or you're just starting out. Him and Anti-Venom both put out healing shit on the ground when you're using your main character that keep your main character alive. That being said, Anti-Venoms is actually better because it occurs when you attack rather than when you are attacked and it's more consistent and it's very easy to find the blobs and run over them and heal whereas Groot just kind of comes in and does a heal zone and you're not really too sure what's going on. So I got to give it to Marvel Avengers Alliance. Heimdall, or Heimdall, Hemi, Dodge, Tough, Hemi, he's been in several games. And, of course, everything in modern history for Heimdall has represented his movie appearance from the Thor movies. Clearly, and, and this is not meant to say anything by any stretch, Heimdall is, is a Norse god and was tended to be portrayed a little bit like Volstagg, a little bigger, white, Viking, Norse. Um, interestingly enough, he's always been represented as his like Idris Elba personification. So he is in Marvel, or was in Marvel Avengers Alliance. He is in Marvel Future Fight. I can't remember if he's in Contest of Champions. And he wasn't in Marvel Heroes. In comparing the two, he clearly wins a Marvel Avengers Alliance. He's decent in Future Fight, and I T2'd him, but 
his worth, especially on PvP defense, definitely belongs to Marvel Avengers Alliance. Hercules, sadly, has been in no other games. Hulk. What can you say about Hulk? He's been in all the games because he's an Avenger and all the games have dealt with Avengers. He usually tends to be a marquee character. In Marvel Avengers Alliance, he enjoyed his biggest spikes as the World War Hulk in early PvP. Later on, the Grey Hulk enjoyed a pretty decent run at PvP uh, because of the fighting dirty procs. And the Avengers Age of Ultron and the regular Avengers, they did okay. Um, but they never, they did more than just phone it in. But they just didn't seem to really have the power. The World War Hulk, of course, got it because of Warbound. So he acted like the Warbringer Axe. And Grey occasionally just proc stuff was really nasty. And it allowed you to have a tactician version of it. Now, this was a tactician actually acting as a good counter to infiltrators because infiltrators counterattacking other tacticians fed Grey Hulk. He was really, really nasty. And of course, he's been in several other games. He's in Marvel Future Fight and he's in Marvel Strike Force. He holds his own in Future Fight. But he's not really considered very good in Strike Force. He's a character you build up by getting the in-game achievements, which means it's slow for people. And a lot of newbies are often drawn to buffing Hulk because the game kind of gives you him. But unfortunately, I have to say Marvel Avengers Alliance is where he's at his best, thanks to the different uniforms. Hyperion was in Marvel Avengers Alliance. He's in Future Fight as a universal hero. He sucks in Future Fight. He definitely had his moments in Marvel Avengers Alliance. I need to go with MAA. Iceman, aside from being in Marvel Heroes and being in Contest of Champions, and of course the classic Marvel vs. Capcom games, is not really in any other game right now, sadly. He's considered an Omega level mutant right now and I will always rally against the fact that Marvel decided to twist his sexuality in recent years mostly because of the way Gene outed him by reading his brain and outing him for saying magic looked hot and calling him out saying well, why do you say that you're not really interested in her and you're not really interested in what's between her legs so why are you saying it that was just shitty now, I'm not saying Marvel can't do what they want with their characters, but to take a notorious womanizer and basically flip the script and retcon the shit out of Iceman, I just felt bad for a completely imaginable, <laughs> you know, a completely imagination character over here. I just thought it was bad. Since he's not really in any other games, we gotta give it a Marvel Avengers Alliance, and I really do have to say... His Horseman of Death uniform, especially compared, uh, partnered up with Pesty or Famine Rogue, was really where Iceman was kind of hitting a sweet spot. Jessica is up next, and honestly, Jessica to me is shit wherever she shows up. I, I she just seems so fucking vanilla to me. I refuse to watch her Netflix series because I think she's just awful. In every game that I ever ran into her, she seemed awful in Marvel Avengers Alliance. She seemed awful in Future Fight, but she's considered pretty decent in Marvel Strike Force because she has very high resistances and she's a key member of a Defenders team. So, for one of the first times today, we're going to give the nod to Marvel Strike Force when it comes to Jessica Jones. Only because she's intimately tied to Defender teams, not really because she's so great on her own. If you're a Jessica Jones fan, I'm sorry, I just fucking hate her. I, I don't mean to offend you. You can like her, and that's fine. And I don't like I don't want to argue about it. I just fucking hate Jessica Jones everywhere that she ever is. Juggernaut. So Juggernaut is in several of the other Marvel games. He has not shown up in Future Fight yet. But he is a Marvel Strike Force as a more premium-ish character. He was in Marvel Avengers Alliance and he is in Marvel Contest of Champions. We are seeing in a lot of other Marvel games 
a slight aspect to Juggernaut's character arc that we've never really realized before and that a lot of the other games consider him mystic. And that is because the Sidorak, the bands of Sidorak on him. And it sneaks up on people who really were kind of only knew him through Marvel Avengers Alliance and such. He, yeah, he's mystic. And it, it sort of makes sense. Avengers Alliance never really hyped that up, but a lot of the other games do. So, this is a tough call between here and Marvel Strike Force because he can put out a lot of damage on Marvel Strike Force if he's set up correctly and he is a key mutant on the Magneto Brotherhood teams. That being said, even with his newness in Marvel Strike Force, and maybe we don't have the most amount of data on him, you have to give it a Marvel Avengers Alliance. Him and Quicksilver, he was they were part of the original blow-up teams. If you let Juggernaut get off the ground, you were probably in for a giant headbutt from hell. Molly Hayes. God, have I wanted to get to this point in this video series where I could talk about Molly Hayes. She's nowhere. She's not in any of the other games, but of course we get to enjoy a bastardization of her character on the Runaway Show. Again, don't misunderstand me. This is not an ethnic thing or anything like that. I really don't like the fact that they changed Molly Hayes to Molly Hernandez. And at least in the first season, I feel like she was underused and everything like that. I'm upset that literally my favorite of the MAA Runaway characters just kind of didn't really do a whole lot in the first season. And they changed her representation and whatnot. Molly has a dear, dear part in my heart because I often like to joke that Molly is like my girlfriend, that she drinks a lot of coffee and then sleeps a lot and rages out sometimes. Um, not at me. Video games. You should hear her playing video games sometimes. But she was one of my favorite bruisers of all time in Marvel Avengers Alliance and she didn't suffer from the tanking virus. She was just as strong on attack as she was on defense, and the Emerald Prism made Molly Hayes a completely destructive force of nature on group bosses and PvP, especially when teamed up with Heroic Age Iron Fist, but sadly, Playnom just shit all over my plate and handed it back to me and nerfed Heroic Age Iron Fist around the same time that they made Stamina such a big deal in PvP, and then Molly Hayes was not useful anymore. Philavelle, you often forget that she's a bruiser. She came out so late in the game, not a lot of people really built her up. She's not in any other game, so we can't really talk about her. And she was presumably too OP because <coughs> she arrived at the end of uh, Marvel Avengers Alliance. <coughs> so people didn't have nearly enough time to get intimate with her and she was considered kind of overpowered. Ronin is a bruiser in this, and he's been represented different ways in other games. He's a universal hero in Marvel Future Fight, and he's a shit hero in Marvel Strike Force. He is absolutely hated in Marvel Strike Force. A group that I admin has an entrance question that says, What do you think is the worst character in MSF? And predominantly, it's Ronin is the answer. I gotta say, we need to give it a Marvel Avengers Alliance because people often considered him OP because he arrived at the end of MAA and he had really nifty things like chance to take an extra turn, does not apply exhaustion, the wind up an epiphany and like all the energy based things that he had over here. He also was in Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics and in M. FF, he has his movie form and his classic green form. In Marvel Future Fight, he's a real good buffer of universal people. However, he really doesn't do anything in any of the games other than Marvel Avengers Alliance. Sandman came in as part of that Sinister Six arc that we had as Marvel Avengers Alliance, and he was really good. He was actually a very good tank, and much like Molly, could put out a lot of damage if set up well for his finest hour attacks. He's in Marvel Strike, excuse me, he's in Marvel Future Fight, and he's considered pretty decent for a combat character. 
in that game. He's noob friendly and often used where you just really need to survive. Tough call over there, but I have to say he was at his best in Marvel Avengers Alliance because he was a decent tank with a lot of good resistances, but also could put out a ton of damage and didn't suffer from the tanking virus. She-Hulk, what could we say? Her, along with Luke Cage and others, was considered the eternal pilots. She is a good passive leader in Marvel Future Fight, and she is not anywhere in Marvel Strike Force. I don't think she was anywhere in Marvel Heroes either. I think she was an NPC in Marvel Heroes. Skrin, of course, gave her some life, and she did see some PvP usage because she was a member of the Worthy. And occasionally, you know, rebuttal worked out well, and Breaker of Men with Pain was good, but she just suffered from being a trash original character. She also is getting a little bit of some love in Marvel Future Fight now because of the uh, Fantastic Four updates that's going on. She gets a Fantastic Four skin. I have to say, other than her really, really good leadership in Marvel Future Fight, she wins an MAA only because of the Worthy costume. This is really the only thing that gives her the power to kind of win when it comes to Marvel Avengers Alliance. So, moving on from her, we have Spider-Girl and Spider-Gwen. Spider-Girl not really represented this way in any other game. She was eh in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Gwen does see a lot of games she's in battle lines she is in uh i think she's in contest of champions she is in future fight she was in marvel avengers alliance she's pretty decent in marvel future fight i'd have to give the nod over to marvel avengers alliance but those two never really super showed up anywhere <sighs> thing Man, you talk about somebody who suffers from the tanking virus. In Marvel Future, excuse me, Marvel Heroes, there was a fear itself thing which made him look cool, like he kind of had the T-virus. Uh, and granted, the future fight thing really could take a boatload of punishment because of Tough Guy and Stonewall and everything like that. As a matter of fact, you've heard me say it so many times, the Kingfisher video thing is invincible in PvP. I mean, it was supposed to be a Black Bolt video, but it wound up being a Thing video. Of course, Agent Anado, or Anado Deer, really, really loved Thing and tried to pitch many, many teams with him thinking that he wasn't a worthless pile of trash, but he was kind of considered a worthless pile of trash. He's now in Future Fight due to the Fantastic Four update, Again, I think he suffers from the tanking virus there. I don't think he's really that good in Future Fight. So I have to give it to Avengers Alliance. He was in Marvel Heroes until all the Fantastic Four characters were ripped out. Thor. Our buddy Thor. Just like the Avengers, he's a marquee character wherever he goes. He's in Marvel Avengers Alliance. He's in Marvel Battle Lines. He's got several variants and Contest of Champions. He's in Marvel Strike Force and he's in Marvel Future Fight. He is everywhere, and unlike a lot of the other Avengers, uh, Avengers, he definitely does get some power spikes there. He's not too vanilla. The Mighty Thor was a General Lee's character that woe be to you if you didn't take advantage of that sale when he popped up. Like I didn't originally, and then I got the Scrapper version. You wanted this version of Thor in this game. He's okay in Future Fight. Excuse me, he's okay in Marvel Strike Force. Not much home to write. You know, it's not really worth writing home about in there. He's a decent leader in Marvel Battle Lines. He's a good card in Ma Marvel Battle Lines. He's also very, very good as a universal hero in Marvel Future Fight. It's arguably what people use on Universal Hero Day. That all going into consideration and being said i have to give it to marvel avengers alliance mostly specifically because of the mighty uniform he was decent as part of an electrical meta but he was never as strong as his buddy horse lips 
and some of the others like Victor. But Thor just, he did fairly well throughout MAA's entire career, especially when he had some friends. And actually, he got along really well with the agent. The agent had a lot of gear that could buff Thor. Thundra suffered from the Fantastic Four curse. She's never appeared in any other games. People were realizing Thundra's power towards the end of the game, especially when she got ISOs. But we just didn't have enough time to really like Thundra the way we could have. But she was stronger than people thought. She worked well with Star-Lord. Valkyrie, much like Phoenix, went through that period where she had incredible reses. And she was a somewhat decent PvE character and was okay at PvP. She is in Future Fight. She showed up during the uh, Thor Ragnarok time period of Future Fight. And she's represented now basically as her movie representation. So she's another one similar to Molly that has gone through a little bit of a, a change. Although people will say the Future Fight one is a Valkyrie, not the Valkyrie. True. But there is a The Valkyrie in the comics, and seemingly that's who the Thor Ragnarok one is representing. I really do have, even though she's a great leader or passive buff in Marvel Future Fight, I have to give it to her in Marvel Avengers Alliance. Volstagg is another one that suffers some weird representation. This is his movie representation, but a lot of times when you see Volstagg now, it's still that classic one with the cone head and the really fat gut and everything. He was super obnoxious when the Warriors 3 was around in Marvel Avengers Alliance, especially if the agent ran the tankard. He's not really in other games right now. He is in Future Fight, but he's just, he's garbage. Nobody ever talks about him. So I gotta give it to Marvel Avengers Alliance, and I have to really give it to that time period when he tanked for the Warriors 3 and a tankard using agent. Wonder Man, not really anywhere else. He's not shown up in any other games. He might have been a team up in Marvel Heroes. And he might have been an NPC, but generally he's nowhere. X-23, of course, has some life in Marvel Future Fight as a speed character. But she was in Marvel Avengers Alliance as a bruiser and a scrapper. She had pretty high attack, and she had wicked, wicked bleeds and exploitation in her Horseman of War outfit. That all going to be wrapped up into each other over here. Out of the two games she's represented in, she definitely wins in Marvel Avengers Alliance. I've heard some good things about her as a speed character, but you cannot forget about the time she was a Horseman of War especially when teamed up with Pesty, or the Scroll, or even Famine Rogue. So there you go guys, this one actually ran out a little bit later than some of the other ones. I'm kind of surprised, considering how many Bruisers are not in other games. But uh, there you go. So to sum up, I had a wrap, Andy Venom and Venom together, Ares Beta Ray Bill, Bishop Captain Britain, Gorgon don't really have representations in other games. Same thing for Iceman, Hercules, Molly, Phyla, Spider-Girl, uh, Thundra, Valkyrie, and Wonder Man. And this one's pretty balanced. Marvel Strike Force seemed to come in a little low on this one. There's not too many in this video where Marvel Strike Force wins. But there wasn't that many characters or that many categories here where Strike Force could have done it. One last thing before we go, Hyperion has his classic uniform with cell shading available in Marvel Future Fight, and of course, everybody hates it. To me, in this entire group, my clear favorites are Molly Hayes and Anti-Venom and their Marvel Avengers Alliance representations of them. So, alright everybody, take care, hope you enjoyed the video, we'll deal with Scrappers next, and again... Just stay tuned for the channel for more of our Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux news when it happens. Just don't talk about it down in the comments of this video or any other of the videos in this series. See you later, everybody.